Hello, this is David E. Hilser. I am a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and if you're not buying exactly what mainstream cosmology and physics are telling you, then this is the place for you. There are thousands and thousands of scientists from around the world that have been working for decades outside the mainstream who have identified problems, fixed those problems, and are proposing new theories and models. You won't find anything like this on YouTube, so be sure to go, go below and click on subscribe and the little bell next to it so you'll be alerted to when our next video drops. And boy, do we have a great one today. I'm really excited about this. I found an amazing article when I was searching for just other dissidents on the internet, and I found this amazing article and story by Dennis Rancourt. He was a tenured professor in physics at a university, and he writes this article called How Not to Teach Physics, and I loved it. This is an absolute gem. I have a link to it. You should read the entire thing, his entire story. He actually has a website and all that, which he uh, actually has talked about this even more. I've been trying to get a hold of him, but let's go forward because I have a huge ending today's video. So if you don't stay till the end, watch out. You're going to miss an enormous announcement. Okay, uh, let's go here. And he says, How Not to Teach Physics by Dennis Rancourt was written in 2013. No one learns physics from being taught physics. Therefore, the best way to teach physics is not to teach physics. It took me 20 years of teaching university physics, physics to finally learn this about physics. And well, year after year, I found that no one learned anything from my courses. The few exceptions who did not who did well on on the final examination would have done equally well in terms of understanding and reasoning on the on the first day of class and learn what they learned from engaging on their own terms with the subject, not from my classroom presentations and antics. So he's saying the way we teach, <clears throat> no one's learning anything. No one's no one's learning anything. You just teach it, people get it. What do I have on the course? What do I have to take on the test? Regurgitate and forget it. And never learn it. So I thought, they don't learn from being taught. That's the mega lie. So let's, let, me, let me try not teaching. I mean really not teaching. Go in the other direction to let the learning do the walking. So I said, let's see, there must be everyday things about what we, uh, what we want to know that we can understand, things we are curious about. <clears throat> he asked this to his class and they said, they couldn't find anything. Some of them said they had a lot of work to do on their other class, so they didn't want me to do, be too much, too demanding. They shared many shared that view. But as the conversation continued, and it is, and as it became clear that well, it was a conversation. They relaxed, but they still could not think of anything they wanted to know beyond the latest homework and the other courses. Sad, really. It, it really truly is sad. So I said, why is the sky blue? No, really, how does that work? That is a great question, something we ask ourselves in our group all the time. So this led us to what is light. Whoa! Can you imagine you're going to a physics class and they go, what is light? I mean, we think about that constantly. In fact, that's the biggest one of the biggest downfalls of mainstream physics. They don't know what light is. They don't know what gravity is. They don't know magnetism. They say it's this. They say it's a photon. They say it's a wave. They don't know. Now we can spend a lot of focus time asking yourself what light it is if you want to know why the sky is blue. So I discovered, I helped them see through questions, what it was tr to truly know or understand something versus just repeat the words. That's all we do. All we do is teach students uh, what to memorize. They regurgitate it out on their tests and they can get good grades and never take any thing home with them. Never learn a thing. That's because we don't teach critical th thinking. <clears throat> we teach you t truths, which you then learn and then spit out on tests. <clears throat> so that's what they were doing, but they were now, they could search and explore and critique themselves. So they did. They, you're kidding. And they could see that I really enjoyed the conversation and that, well, I was a good person, even though I was frightening in a good way. Why was he frightening? Because he's a physics teacher and they all think, you know, astrophysicists are, they, all these crazy ideas, they just think they're stupid. And actually they're crazy ideas that are stupid, not them. So we developed a relationship in physical phenom phenomenon. That is amazing. That's a great teacher. Great teachers will tell you, give you a reason to understand. I want to know about the universe. We all have curiosity about what light is. 
I mean, we all see it. We all experience. And this guy started to develop. Instead of just telling him, telling everybody what the current theories are, right or wrong, he developed a, a relationship in physical phenomena. And that's when things took off. There were almost 50 of them. They researched on their own and brought new ideas back to class. Oh, heaven forbid. <laughs> Get this. It became so good. The students were bringing their friends into class and telling their parents in glowing terms about the physics core. What? Look at the difference. This guy taught physics for 20 years. What's happening? Well, and we had a final exam uh, examination. Now, honestly, it was like no final examination I have ever seen before. It was the opposite of depressing and, and fun to grade. It was full of intelligence and independent thought and evidence of significant research. I had the sense that the students had understood things, ex could explain them, and owned their knowledge. This is a perfect description of everybody in our group. We are interested in what we are interested because we really want to find the answers. We are not satisfied with the what we are told by mainstream science because when you look at what they say is true, you look at the data and you look at everything yourself and use your critical thinking, you soon find you are listening to a house of cards. That yes, relativity is a house of cards. That particle physics is a house of cards. That the Big Bang is a house of cards. That plate tectonics, the way with a fixed radius, is a house of cards. It doesn't work. So this guy is, made an experiment of doing something in a class that was just absolutely amazing. I mean, this should be spread all over. And what does he go on to talk about this? I said, I went back to the previous year's examinations, the one where he taught traditionally and saw a huge difference. I, I let, lent the two piles of examinations to the TA, teacher's assistant, and she concurred that, yes, there was a significant qualitative improvement that could not be denied. In other words, his experiment showed that these kids took something home that, and curiosity and learning that they'll never forget. And of course, with this, he's going to be hoisted up at the university, made dean, and he's going to change the entire way that we do teaching for the last 3,000 years, which is basically just tell people what truth is, and they got to recurgitate it and not teach critical thinking. Is that what happened? Here's what happened. That was the only year that I felt I had done a good job in first year physics. And they never let me teach introductory, introductory physics again after 20 years. That's what happens when you actually try to teach kids and people real things and be critical thinkers and to advance their, the, the science instead of just telling what science and truths are and saying, you, you learn these, this is it, do not question them. If you do, this is what happens. As soon as I figure out how to make it work, they deprived me of practicing my hard-earned trade. And I was fired from my 10-year full, full prof professorship, which is really hard to do, two years later under the false pretext of fraudulent grading in one advanced physics course. And you know what? What's really sad? The students themselves will turn on you. I know a physics, prof uh, an engineering professor from Rio de Janeiro who taught critical thinking and opens that, look, if you're going to pick, pick a subject like Big Bang and you have to look at both the pros and the cons, a third of his students were reporting him to the dean that he was teaching bad science. All he was doing is saying, you're allowed to question. You're allowed to be a critical thinker. Horrific. And I'll give this guy, um, uh, this wonderful author and person and critical thinker, uh, uh, his conclusion, I want to read that to you. I found out several years later that the chairman of physics wrote the dean of science that he had heard I was doing something unusual and that the dean should probably know about it. They never asked me about it or brought it up during the magical year of not teaching first year physics. I would have been pleased to tell them about my discovery. Avoid all teaching. Class time is too precious to waste on such a numbing activity. It's funny because some some countries are starting to change. Finland, for example, has changed their system completely. And they went from like 29th in the world to first in the world. And they don't teach anything traditionally anymore. They have the kids. The kids go to school like in, in elementary school, two or three or four hours a day max. And most of it's spent outside. They say, go outside. Um, they're third graders, for instance. Go outside. And oh, today what I want you to do is find bugs. Kids love that. They go out and find bugs. 
and then they have to come back and they talk about it. And the teacher guides that curiosity for their, for their learning. And guess what? The Finns are, are beating everybody in education around the world, including the United States. This whole thing about uh, core studies and tests, this is asinine. And you're thinking, well, what can we do about it? Well, one of the things we've talked about many, many years is now happening in our group. I got a, a, an email, and I told you to stay around. Don't go away. Still haven't made the announcement. Got an email from a bunch of students who are 17 years old from where? Nepal, in Tibet. And they, they said, David, I'm writing you because we found uh, your organization. And we always thought that the certain certainty that all these physics evangelists, I call them physics evangelists, all these people on TV and in Hawking and all these other people, when they were talking with all this certainty and all this, you know, when they talk, they're just so sure of themselves. We thought that was because they were, they were right. But then when we started looking at it, we found out that that was really arrogance talking and that if we were to question anything and we basically could only do what they said was right and what we are, we're looking in the future as physics students, they said this in an email, as physics students, we're looking at going and, and doing what our professor said and specializing and specializing under specialization under specialization and doing nothing. Completely killing all of these curious young minds who have been in a country where there's Buddhism and they, I'm pretty sure, probably are maybe doing a better job at teaching than even the U.S. Because they look at it as really curiosity for learning. They said, what do we do? We, if we go to these universities, we're going to be bored out of our skull. They'll probably end up moving their majors. And I said, well, we need to do something we've been planning on doing for many years. And even though this isn't an official announcement, this is, a, is an official announcement to you, all my subscribers who, have, who are learning to be critical thinkers, or who are already critical, critical thinkers, something that we will be announcing uh, eventually publicly. But I'm going to do it right here. Why? because it's important and it's something we've wanted to do for many years. And that is that currently we are putting together and we have a website already. We already have an open source learning uh, software where we can create classes from anywhere in the world to start the Chappelle University, the John Chappelle University of Natural Philosophy. And it's founding this year we're putting this together. If you're interested in, in, in being part of this, you can be part of it from anywhere in the world. You don't have to be a person that has to be an expert in anything because we're putting together courses, a lot of them, of surveys of things that are already out there. We're not out there to do teaching of things that, that of course, you can learn in universities, but teachings on things like expansion tectonics, on infinity, on uh, new models for the universe and we have several people already wanting to teach about their models and you can literally go and learn it and take courses and do research and write papers all those things using software that's open source software this is all put together on a website right now it's simply not open to the public and these will be degrees and certifications in natural philosophy. I'll give you one course that we're going to be working on, my dad will be working on, will be an electrical engineering course, which will be a teaching electronical, in electrical engineering and all the components according to the way the particle model sees the world. So you will be able to learn according to the particle model how the actual physics behind all the components of electronics. And this is from a guy who is an electrical engineer all his life, and a very good one. He was very accomplished. He was in research, in fact. He came up with new circuits all the time, and he was, he was very good. And this, this is giving you an idea. In Infinity, we have Glenn Borkert's work. So we don't have to necessarily even have the person who is involved with it be the people putting together the course, because we want to put a course so that we have students, like these students from Tibet, who say, hey, I want to learn about this kind of stuff. I want to learn critical thinking. I want to learn about the Big Bang and all its problems and about the steady state or eternal universe. Or uh, I want to learn about expansion tectonics because I think that's a better model. Where do I learn it? How do I take a course in it? How do I get even say that I know about this stuff? 
that's what this is about so if you are watching this or if you know people who are interested in helping out and like I said you don't have to be an expert in anything because we can put together these courses and we have people doing that right now then please contact me at uh, at the email below I'll put it below and you can be part of this groundbreaking university that is going to crack and use these same techniques that this man was using and that is get them curious about something and say okay what do we know about it and they can do research outside of mainstream and come up with their even maybe their own models which will be better than mainstream models maybe they'll be the next great scientists but we need a university that teaches and that's what this is all about we're starting this on the ground floor this year please if you want to help out you're anywhere in the world again it's on the internet so that's our big announcement and I am not announcing this offic officially until our uh, conference in June the end of June in Connecticut in the United States if you happen to be in that area you can uh, come and we'll be t officially uh, having our first meetings official of the members to about the the John Chappelle University of Natural Philosophy online folks because that's the way it's all happening anyways and all the mechanisms are in place so we don't have to even worry about that we can just start putting it together remember what I say don't take my word or anyone else's word on faith stay critical stay thinking I am David D. Hilser. I am your science therapist ciao for now